Now we're going to take a look at unscheduled routes. Unscheduled routes might be the trickiest part of scheduling in terms of getting your head around it. Um, but what ad unscheduled routes are intended to handle is work that comes up on demand. Um, that's fairly predictable in terms of a route, but unpredictable uh, based on when it's going to happen. The perfect example for this is snow or uh, salting. When we can build a, a route for snow plowing or build a route for salting sites, but we don't know when it's going to snow, so it's you can't put a route on a schedule necessarily. But you don't want to, on the evening of an event, have to scramble around adding all your jobs manually to each person's schedule to get your snow done correctly. So what we built is a tool called Unscheduled Routes. Unscheduled Routes will allow you to create and route a series of sites in a specific order. And then when it snows, you can basically say, add this route to this calendar, to this crew, and the whole batch of jobs will go to that crew. Then they can work their way through that route on their timesheets on their phone, and everything should happen smoothly. Um, here's how to set up an unscheduled route. I got a couple examples there already, but I'm going to create a new one first. First, you want to make sure you have a work calendar in place. It's got to be a recurring calendar. So once again, snow plowing is recurring. It's something that's going to happen over and over. We're doing the same services over and over. We just don't know when we're going to do it. So I've created a snow plowing um, calendar type. I got my color. I've got my default crew size. I've got all that kind of stuff set up. I set the default crew size to one. I don't really need a visit schedule for snow plowing at all. I don't know when I'm going to go plowing. We have no idea. So we can't set up a predictable pattern. So you can leave that blank. Your snow plowing visit schedule should be blank. Just looks like this. What you need for snow plowing is this idea of an unscheduled route. So let's set up a plowing east schedule as an example. So down at the bottom here, I'm going to click add route to add a new one. And I'll call this snow plow east. Oops. And this will be our sites east of the shop. And the default calendar, of course, is going to be snow plowing. Now you'll note here I can only do unscheduled routes for recurring work. Non-recurring calendars won't show up here. That's why you had to make sure your snow plowing calendar is a recurring one. So I'll pick snow plowing. The estimated crew size will be one. And we're going to hit OK. So it's going to create the calendar for us, or the route for us. But as of right now, we don't have any sites in this route. What we want to do next is create the list of jobs that, in this case, are our snowplow jobs east of the shop so that we can build a route for the snowplow truck that's going out to do these sites. So the first thing you want to do is go down to the bottom here and say add sites. Now, it'll come up as blank to start with, but all your jobs are in here. It just doesn't load every single job and every single task by default. You can do a search, or what might be faster is if you've set your snow jobs up as a snow job type in LMN time, you just need to pick snow type and click search, and all my different snow jobs will appear there along with all the work I'm doing. Now note, plowing and salting is what I'm doing with this truck. It's a plow truck, um, so I want to find my plowing and salting tasks. Remember, on your job, you could have a couple of different tasks. You could have removals and relocates. You could have walkways and shoveling. You could have a salt truck, just a salter going. So make sure you're grabbing the right task for the job. All this is task specific. If you if you grab the wrong one, you're gonna um, you're gonna be marking the wrong stuff off as complete. So in this case, this is my plow truck going out. So I'm gonna say for this job, and for this job. And for this job, I want the plowing and salting. And maybe also as part of this route, uh, this site is going to be on there. And this site is going to be on there. And this site. So now I've, I've got my east side of the um, shop routes built. And so I can say, OK, all my different jobs and tasks are in there. Take out that one. Is it? All my different jobs and tasks are in there. And we're set up with a reasonable route for a night. So I'm going to click OK. Here's the different sites that we're supposed to hit based on what we just set up there. And this is the order that they're coming in. Now, by default, they just came in an alphabetical order. You can move the order around and set them to whatever you want. If you want to move the Acme Business Center up, that's fine. And move this one down, we can do that. So you can set the order manually if you want. Or there's also a button down here that says Optimize This Route. And when you optimize this route, it will use a mapping tool to find the most efficient way to get these five sites done. So I'll hit optimize route here. 
And the first thing you need to pay attention to is the start and the end date, or the start and the end location. This is usually the location of your shop, or at least where your plow truck is starting from and finishing at. Once you know these are right, you've got your sites in here from your route, you hit optimize route. It'll think for a couple of seconds as it calculates a few different ways to hit it. And what it'll come back with is the correct um, or the most correct order that you should do the site. So you can take a quick look at the map and it'll show me the route. This, this route's a little ridiculous as I ended up with a site from Detroit in there, um, but you will get a, a, a rough map or I can pick directions and I can get turn by turn directions for this. And if you wanna put this in a Word document, you can simply just use your mouse to copy all this and paste it into a Word document and you can have those uh, directions somewhere if you want. Once you're happy with the route, you can hit OK and it'll change these around to be in the correct order that your uh, route was indicated in. And that's it. Now I click save and I've got the, the route. One thing you may want to pay attention to before you click save is also the man hours here. So depending on how you set up your job, the man hours are going to be either very accurate or in some cases not so accurate. Double check your man hours because it is going to be used for scheduling. For those of you who didn't even estimate a number of visits for snow plowing, but maybe put a total amount of hours per year, you could see some really wacky numbers here. What you really want to make sure is that these are the average time per visit for each one of these sites. So the average number of man hours per visit for each one of these sites. And then um, there will be a factor when it does, when you add this to the route to either make this faster or, or slower than usual, depending on uh, the amount of snow we get. We'll take a look at that. But again, double check these and make sure that they are correct in the sense that they are the man hours per time we're gonna plow on average. So you hit save and it's actually warning me right here that you, know, you got a shift here with 18 man hours worth of work, but that's not realistic for a one person crew. So at that point, I'm gonna click okay and come back and revisit it. So I gotta figure out what, and sure enough, I got one job here at six hours and one job at five point something. That is a lot of work for a crew in a night. I'm going to uh, reduce that time. So we can take that big job there out of this. And now that I've taken the big job out, I may wanna re-optimize the route. So I'm gonna quickly do that again. So it'll take another quick look. And just to make sure I'm still dealing with the best order. So I'll hit okay, there's my best order. And now I can save the route. And I should have a much more reasonable number of man hours in this week. So it's saved and I can go back. Now, when it snows, it's going to look like this. We're going to go to our whiteboard. And I'm going to turn off some of these crews just to make this view simpler. I'm going to need a plow truck crew. So I'll quickly go to my schedule crews and I'll add uh, plow truck one. And my crew size is... Once I've got my plow truck one or some plow truck uh, as a scheduled crew, go back to my whiteboard and I'm going to say add unscheduled. So let's assume it's snowing in a couple of hours. I need to make sure my guys are ready. I'm going to come to my whiteboard. I'm going to say add unscheduled. Make sure the date is correct. If you're going to start one o'clock in the morning, I'm going to move this to the next day so that it's accurate. Um, make sure the date's correct. But now I'm going to go un add unscheduled. So it says, what route are you adding? De-icing east, de-icing west, or snowplow east? We're going to do that snowplow that we just created. We're going to add it to the snowplowing calendar. It's going to go to salt, or I'm sorry, plow truck one. Crew size is one. And now it says, do you want to use the estimated hours or do you want to use less than or more than the estimated hours? So in the case of a light event, I could do estimated time minus 30%. That'll give my driver accurate goals, 30% of our usual time, in the case of a light event. If it's a very heavy event, I might want to go estimated time plus 40%, and that'll give the crew again. Here was the average estimated hours plus 40% because it's snowing a lot. So I'll, I'll do estimated minus 10. It's slightly less than average tonight. So we'll hit okay. And now I've generated a route for plow truck one. I've got 11 hours and 10 minutes worth of work assigned to that plow truck on this day, and each job has been given a uh, the job name, the duration that we're supposed to be there. It's already optimized in the right order for routing and uh, the crew can follow it one of two ways. If on their electronic timesheets on LMN Times Mobile, they click add, um, they clock into the scheduled route, plow truck one, 
it's going to show them these sites in this order and they just need to go one, two, three, four down to the root. Uh, or you can come down here and you can print what's called a crew daily. So if I print the crew daily, I can print this for plow truck one and hit OK. And what it'll do is generate a report for them of the sites they're supposed to hit. And over on the right here, you can see the goal in crew hours. And don't forget that goal has been adjusted to the settings. So if you did a plus 10% or minus 15%, whatever you did for the times, that goal will be the live goal, the adjusted goal based on the weather factor, the best you could have predicted it. We all know that snow events can change as they happen, but to the best of our ability to predict how severe this event's gonna be, that crew goal will give them the, the metrics that you've scheduled. And ideally your guys will come in on time, on budget, and you'll make money when you do your snow work. Um, as the crews are on their timesheets and knocking them off as complete. So this is from the admin panel, but as the crew knocks it off as complete in the timesheet, you'll see these sites start getting checked off um, as it happens live. You can refresh the screen at any point in time and see exactly up to the minute what sites have been completed as of that time. We'll get more into that when we look at the videos on um, how schedules how schedules are marked as complete for crews and, and also how to edit visits.